For more on the president's speech today and what happened in the last week, we are joined by Mark Schmitz. His son, Jared, a Marine Lance Corporal, died in the suicide bombing at the Kabul airport last week. Uh, Mark, I, I can only imagine what this week has been like for you. And so I appreciate you joining us. And, and I want to start with our, our sincere condolences to you and your family. Thank you. So Jared was a, a Marine Lance Corporal. Um, and and I, I, I guess my mind goes directly, Mark, to the, the transfer ceremony at Dover and your meeting with President Biden. I understand you weren't sure you wanted to meet with him at first, but you did in the end. Can you describe that meeting? Um, I felt it was important that I speak with him, get off my chest, um, what I wanted to say, which was in summary, quite simple. Um, we showed him a picture. Uh, in fact, it was the last picture uh, ever taken of my son. It was the morning of the day he was killed. Um, and I sh we showed him that photo. He sat there and stared at it. And I, all I could think to do was say my son's name. That's Jared Schmitz. Jared Art. Schmitz, don't ever forget that name. Don't ever forget the name of all 12 others that perished that day and take the time to learn their stories. What did he say after you told him that? He, uh, he, he pretty much barked back and said he knows their stories. Um, not sure what that meant exactly, but there's no way because I don't even know the other 12 stories completely yet. Um, we want to play just a clip, Mark, of uh, the president's comments today, and, and we'll have you address it afterwards. A lot of our veterans and their families have gone through hell. I don't think enough people understand how much we have asked of the 1% of this country who put that uniform on, willing to put their lives on the line in defense of our nation. Mark, none of this, I'm sure, helps to ease the pain. But in the end, are you glad you were able to meet with the president and look him in the eye and have him hear from you? Yeah, I think Jared would have wanted me to do that. Um, you know, just I'm sure he would have wanted me to say a lot of other things, too. Uh, but, you know, this isn't about political bashing. Uh, this is about our, our young uh, boys, men and women that, uh, that didn't make it home. So. Right. Uh, Mark, you wrote on Facebook, and it almost broke me in half. Um, my baby boy, my son, my Marine, my warrior, my soul, I will never forget my hero. Uh, tell us a little more about Jared, would you? Yeah, Jared um, was determined to be a, a Marine starting about sophomore year. He was dead set focused on doing that, trained vigorously. He, uh, he wasn't the type to go to the library or put in a lot of extra work uh, in front of a book or the computer unless he was gaming. But uh, he spent hours and hours researching the Marine Corps, what it was going to take physically for him to get through all this and to make sure he was fully prepared to do it. He uh, graduated and immediately enlisted. Well, he actually enlisted prior to graduating, but uh, he was still young enough. We had a sign for him. Yeah. Um, but by the time he graduated, he was 18 and, and went straight to the Corps. And we were proud to be able to be there in October when he graduated. And uh, he, he was just anxious to serve his country and help people. That's what he was all about. What did you talk to him about, Mark, uh, before this latest deployment to Kabul and also during while he was there at the airport? Were you able to, to communicate with him? You, you talked about one of his most recent posts. He had um, reached out to me by phone uh, while he was still in Jordan. Um, it actually took some coercing and some tough fatherly love to beat it out of him to where he was going because he, I guess they weren't supposed to talk about it. Sure. But uh, um, in any case, you know, I, I told him, I said, this is what you've been training for. And, and he said, shut up, dad. I know, I know what I'm doing. I've got my brothers and sisters. They've got my back. I've got theirs. We've got this. And I said, okay. And uh, you know, you can't help but to be terrified for the, for the guys. And um, when he was there, I did, the, the communication, there were, there's no more phone calls after that, but mm -hmm. um, he spent four days on post, is my understanding. He reached out to me via text and said that they were finally letting him get some sleep and uh, he was going to be going back out on post. And my understanding was he was going to be on the airstrip. And, you know, when this attack happened, um, my 
my heart broke, of course, for the for the men and women that were killed and, and right. for their families. And I'm sitting there thinking, my son's okay at least. Um, you know, he's on the airstrip, not at the gate. Well, I didn't never got a call from him, never got a text. And the next correspondence I got, unfortunately, was at 2:40 a.m. when there's two Marines standing there uh, at my front door. Uh, Mark, I'm sure that you've seen some of the the polls and heard some of the discussion about now that we're out of this, whether it was worth it. And and I don't know how in the world you answer that, considering what you lost. But can you give it a chance, a shot? You know, all of our men and women that have fought for these past 20 years. You know, Jared was six months old when this all started, mm -hmm. and here it is, right at the very end. And like what four days to go and and he's he's now gone but there's so many um, brave men and women that that fought for our country through this and i would never take anything away from that i mean that they were there for a reason they did their jobs proudly we should all be very proud for them and for everything they've done for us uh, i don't think there's an american out there that doesn't agree that we needed to get out of there it's about time problem is, of course, how it was done. And that's what I have a problem with. I think that's what a lot of us have problems with. And um, I think if things were handled differently, my son and the other 12 would still be here as well. Well, that's so well put. And it wraps up our time. Uh, Mark, uh, in St. Charles, Missouri, I grew up in, in Ferguson, Missouri. So uh, I did read that uh, Jared was a big hockey fan and any hockey fans, a friend of mine, uh, and I'm sure glad he was able to see our St. Louis Blues finally win that Stanley Cup. Yeah, we, we've got season tickets, so we took him as often as we could. Yeah. Mark Schmitz, father of Marine Jared Schmitz. Mark, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.